My name is Boyd Varty. I think of myself as an artist of experience. My passion is to create transformational experiences for myself and others as a way to explore what it means to truly live. My central exploration is to live on what I would call the track of your life. To me, this is to live courageously towards the discovery of what you are called to and to what life asks of you. So much of how I live has been informed by my passion as an animal tracker. I'm following the trail of my own life and reporting back. This show is a daily broadcast from a treehouse on the Londolozi Game Reserve in the wild eastern part of South Africa. Londolozi is a 14,000 hectare wilderness reserve adjacent to the Kruger National Park. The land is home to lion, leopard, rhino, elephant and buffalo, as well as a variety of other animals. I'm your host, Boyd Varty. My goal is to spend 40 days and 40 nights alone in the wilderness to explore the archetype of the mystic in nature and hone my skills as a tracker. These are my daily stories. Day 36. Never punch a monkey. Journal entry. In the silence by the fire, I suddenly heard growling. The sound was so constant, I thought for a moment I was hearing an engine of a generator on the breeze. Then I realized it was an animal sound. Because the fire was crackling, I then thought it might have been one of the numerous octaves of rumbling that an elephant can produce. But a few minutes later, I heard it again. This time I could clearly pinpoint where it was coming from, and that it was the sound of cats mating, but without the very specific sharp growling a leopard makes at the end of copulation. Lions, close by somewhere, down the river bank and towards the back of the camp. My mind flashed to my grandfather, who would regularly get awoken in the middle of a moonlit night by his friend and tracker Winnis, who had heard lions growling near the camp. He would put his boots on with his pajamas and set off to investigate. So in line with this family tradition, I grabbed my big torch and walked in the clear moonlight down the entrance road of the camp. I kept the torch off to allow my eyes to become accustomed to the night. The moon was so bright I threw a shadow. I walked and listened, extremely alert. I knew if the lions were mating, I only need wait a bit and I would hear them again. I stood very still. I could hear myself breathe as I waited in the moonlight, alert. Scops owls called in stereo, all around. Purr, purr, purr. Then the sound again. I moved fast towards the growling, knowing that the lions would be engaged and not hear me. Then I saw the male and, fem and the female under him. I positioned myself near a tree, a good distance away. The sight of the lion in the moonlight was terrific. His body silhouetted and his huge mane like a symbol of power. The air was very cool and the cat stood and began to walk away from me on a hippo path towards the river. Watching them move in the night and to be alone had a feeling of something astonishingly private. Something that I will always have that is just for me. I may tell the story, but no one will ever really understand how I felt that night. How close to myself. How close to something simultaneously tangible and completely intangible I stood. I went back to the fire and just sat there for a long time. I didn't read or write, I just sat. It's become a very welcome way of being, but still as I do it, I think of how distracted I had become before, never just sitting anywhere without listening to or looking at or texting something. This kind of empty fire sitting is a way of being with your own being. It's very healing. Afterwards I went up to the tree and when I got into the net, the branches were reflected on the netting, like a Japanese painting. 
I've been rereading Bob Bourdain's first book, thinking about how books are an incredible way to send ideas and personality through time. I have two hurricane lanterns next to the bed, and they throw a warm orange glow that's fine for a bit of reading. Little did Bourdain and I know what lay ahead of us that night. I went to sleep as I usually do at about 8.15. At 2 a.m. I was awakened by the sound of something landing on the deck of the tree, a flat thump. It was so cold so I stayed under the blanket. Next thing I knew, a spray was hitting my face, and then more thudding sounds. For a second, I thought it was raining. I looked to the sky and saw stars. I briefly flashed on the thought of a spitting cobra. Liquid splashed onto Bourdain's face on the book next to me, and then across onto mine. A turd hit the top of the, the net, and then another. And that's when I realized Bourdain and I were getting pissed on. <laughs> I leaped out of bed, wiping urine from my eyes, wondering if in all his years of adventure, Bourdain thought he would get posthumously pissed on by a monkey in Africa while in bed with another man. At this moment, the rest of the troop, all sleeping secretly in the top of the tree, were awakened by my shouts and the shining of the torch up into the branches. This unnerved them all, and what followed was a full troop 2 a.m. ablution. Crap rained down like mortars, urine like jungle napalm. I had the feeling of being in a rainforest. I grabbed one of the tops, half blinded with monkey piss, and pulled it over my head. The troop, now flustered, started throwing themselves across the divide between my tree and the next. It occurred to me that I'd been out of the camp later than usual, just at the time when monkeys roost, and that is why this issue had arisen on day 36. You never really know when you'll get pissed on by a monkey. You can always add that to your gratitude list. Did not get pissed on by a monkey today. Tick. Bourdain's face on the cover of his book had taken a nasty strafing, and some crap <laughs> was through the gauze of the net like half-grated cheese. The blanket was wet, which sucked because it was hellishly cold. I once got in a fight with a monkey that tried to steal my breakfast muffin off a buffet. Afterwards, I had thought of writing a memoir called Never Punch a Monkey and Other Tales. Another time, I was talking to a, a woman who was on retreat. It was a breakfast coaching session at the lodge, and she was holding a slice of buttery toast while, <laughs> while saying to me, My whole life, I just feel like all the things I care about get taken from me. As if on cue, a monkey jumped up and yanked her toast from her hand, startling her and then causing her to sob which proved very helpful because it took her to the release she much needed. Once at the Londolosi camp, one monkey learned of the cheese platters that were put out at night. Monkeys are usually very careful not to move at night, but this monkey broke with monkey protocol in the name of cheese. For a time we were baffled by disappearing Gorgonzola, but then we saw him. And I'll tell you, for years after that, Every time my sister ate the last chocolate or my leftovers that I was excited about, I would say to her, did you eat my food? And she would smile and say, it was the night monkey. I washed my face. I ate an apple. I was wide awake at 2 a.m. I put on my dry as a bone coat and took some towels for additional warmth and sat in my chair asking what nature was trying to teach me. Some kind of monkey kink? Never drop your guard? Never trust your roost mates? I was struck by that old idea that the things you worry about never happen. It's the things you never thought about that get you. Till you find yourself shivering at 2 a.m., damp with monkey piss, crap in your hair. Finally at dawn, finally dawn broke, and I was so grateful to see it. I slammed a cup of tea and set off to follow those lions, which I did for miles. I feel some fundamental improvement in my ability to follow. I'm anticipating very well. For a time, I lost the tracks for a good 30 minutes, but kept persisting in a diagonal line across thick bush till I cut the tracks on a game path, where they promptly turned 180 degrees and went back where they had came from. Eventually they crossed the border, 
but I was pleased with how I did. And it helped me move on from the dark trauma of the primate golden showers of the night before. Technically, I'm entering a phase now of this ceremony, which you might think of as dismount. I need to slowly start to integrate this ceremony and prepare to carry all the learnings back into the world. I really understand that mystics must go to their caves. After this, I know that all my life I will take time to go and be alone in nature. And it's not beyond the realms of possibility that I become a hermit in my later life. But for now, there are fires in the world to sit beside and still so many people's stories to sit and hear. Yours in monkey love, 4-0, out. This has been another episode of the Track Your Life podcast with Boyd Varty. Follow us on Instagram at Boyd underscore Varty, Twitter at Boyd Varty. Visit Boyd's website at boydvarty.com or subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player. Please rate and review this podcast so that more people can find and enjoy it.